So a lot of people are asking for a closer view of the Dobsonian telescope. So this is Orion SkyQuest XX14G, G as in go to. So this Dobsonian has a go to capability like other Dobsonians which are pretty much manual. You just point and view wherever that you need to uh, look up the sky that you wanted. So this one is made by Orion. I misspoke in my last video that they are not making uh, anything bigger than 14. Uh, so someone corrected me that it's actually uh, 16 is still available. So you can buy anywhere from 8 inches to 16 inches now. So these have a secondary mirror and a primary mirror. So you see the black shroud that I have like a cloth. Uh, I just put there, make sure that there is no dust on that uh, reflection cloth. And then on, in the bottom, uh, if I take the plate out, you will actually see the primary mirror as well. So that mirror that you see there is actually the secondary on these Dobsonians. So they take the light from the primary, it goes into the telescope, reflect back into this secondary, and secondary is going to redirect that to your eyepiece, right? So let me take the top of this one. So you actually can close the lids so this is the primary mirror. It's 14 inch primary mirror. It's pretty big, but you can actually split this into three pieces, the bottom portion, the truss tubes, and the top portion. So it's easy to dismantle this, you know, to carry to a dark site or wherever you want it to go. You can just use those uh, knobs. They're all thumb screws. So they are easy to remove and you don't lose them because they are attached to those other uh, tubes. Pretty much the bottom portion, if you really wanted to, you can actually break the, the bottom portion into three pieces as well. So yeah, so this whole thing comes out. Like you can take the sideboards as well out if you want to or you can carry the entire bottom portion as like one piece. So they have these knobs here, which we are going to use to collimate. Also, there are knobs on the primary. So these are counterweights. The big black ones are the counterweights. And the silver one that you see there, uh, those are the collimation screws for the primary okay so you turn them to make sure that you can collimate your primary very very well actually those counterweights are not enough for this one so i ordered two additional counterweights so these are the ones that you use to collimate you can buy these collimation equipment i'll put some links for these they are not expensive, uh, they are pretty decently priced. So there are like two pieces there, like one, the silver one that helps you collimate the secondary and the black one with the silver one together is going to help you collimate the primary. Okay, so you take the silver one, put that inside your eyepiece holder so if you have a smaller daub, you may have a one and a quarter inch. So this is a two inch laser, depends on the size of the te uh, telescope that you're going to use, what kind of a laser size that you need to buy. Once you put that in, press that button, which is going to turn the laser on, okay? So when you turn the laser on, when you go to the front, collimation is actually pretty simple and easy on a Dobsonian telescope. 
all you have to do is take the red dot and put it in the middle of that circle. If you see a black circle there, that's where it has to be. So the, there are three knobs on the secondary. So you turn those knobs, and when you turn those knobs, you know, if the red is not aligned, you can actually align it, like make very minor movements. You see that now? The black dot is now on the red dot exactly, right? So make sure it is picture perfect, okay? So it has to be precise, very minor correction. Look at the black dot and the red dot in between. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, the one right now what you're watching. So this your red dot has to go right into the middle of the black dot. If you do that, you're done collimating the secondary. So how do you collimate the primary? Well, you have to take out the aluminum equipment out of the eyepiece holder that you put it in. You take that aluminum piece out, put that into that black, the second part, and put that into the eyepiece holder again. Now it comes with the black piece as well. The aluminum part will be on the top and the black is there now into the eyepiece holder. So let me give you a closer look on this one. You see that inside the black part, you see a black ring like right in the middle, but there is a black kind of a um, another ring to the side. So those two need to be aligned. So you can actually do it in the night time so it's very visible. You see that I'm slowly moving the back side of the primary mirror, the silver knobs, and trying to align that black ring to the kind of a hole in the middle, the black hole in the middle. I'm just giving you a close up view of this screen, but I'll show you where I'm making the change. But you should be able to see now, pretty close, how I'm, when I move the primary mirror collimation knobs, it is coming closer and closer. It's pretty simple. It's very difficult in the daytime actually to see it. As it comes a little darker in the night, it's very easy. Now it is perfect. So that's all to it. Now you collimated both the primary and the secondary mirror on a Dobsonian telescope. So once you are done with your collimation, when you go to a star, I put a bath nerve mask on the Dobsonian. The same bath nerve mask for the C14 Hyperstar one does work for this one. So this star is a giant one. It's called Arcturus. It's one of the biggest stars in the sky. And those spikes that you see, they are coming from the spider veins of the telescope. So all the bigger stars will have these kind of spikes when you're using a Dobsonian and when you're taking a picture. I believe I connected the ZWO120 color camera, the small camera, planetary camera, and it's an incredible view. I wish you success in your Dobsonian journey, whether it is visual or astrophotography as well. Clear skies.